Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. If the Texans' plan was to build a championship roster with exactly zero pieces in place, they're doing a perfect job, Perna. J.J. Watt and the Texans mutually agree that the Texans suck, and J.J. is free to now play for a real football team. J.J. posted the announcement directly to his social media accounts today. I have sat down with the McNair family, and I have asked them for my release and we have mutually agreed to part ways at this time. And now I can't imagine my life without Texas in it. Um, the way that you guys have treated me, besides draft night, I mean, you guys booed me on draft night. Wait, Texans fans booed J.J. Watt on draft night? Man, I really missed the NFL draft with real people in the crowd. As you'd expect, unless he's fresh off of beating Andy Dalton's ass. Our goal is to come out here and make uh, the red rifle look like a red rider BB gun, and I think we did that. Wow. JJ always says exactly the right things. He's like the Michael Jordan of not pissing anyone off. Today, I'll talk about where Watt would be a good fit and the newest rumblings that Deshaun Watson actually really, no seriously, is intrigued by the Denver Broncos. They might be one of his two top choices. And for some reason, the Raiders have emerged with the best odds to land Russell Wilson. Since I don't believe Russ goes anywhere, that's like having the best odds at winning a gold medal in the Olympics when your only athletic skill is self-gratification. It's good sports. I love you. Hey, I promise to not use the phrase, Houston, we have a problem for this entire episode. If that doesn't convince you to subscribe, nothing will. I'm not gonna lie, I'm barely hanging on. Barely hanging on. I'm sick, baby's sick. The whole Perna household is a fucking shit show. If you bought some of my coffee, benchwarmerbrew.com, it might make you feel better. It'll actually make somebody you don't even know feel better because for every order placed at benchwarmerbrew.com through the Feha Foundation, we help feed somebody in need. So buying my coffee, you're supporting others. It's organic, ethically sourced, just really delicious, medium roast beans, medium roast. So if you wanna check it out, please do. And the cheapest way to get it is with the subscription plan. So, Bench Warmer Brew. Stop it. It's important to note that out of all of the shitty things coming out of Houston lately, they did do J.J. Watt a huge favor by releasing him 33 days ahead of the official start of free agency, which will end up increasing his market value. They didn't have to do that, and they could have tried to trade him for a low round draft pick, but this was the best thing for Watt as a player and a real human person. The big question now, where will JJ go? The Steelers are the obvious choice so that all three Watt brothers can play together. Not sure the Steelers can afford or deserve to go full wattage, but this is everyone's favorite idea. The Steelers are 18 million over the cap right now and I'm not sure even JJ loves his brothers enough to pay the Steelers 18 million so he can play their next season. That's how the cap works. JJ was wearing a Wisconsin shirt in his announcement, which clearly means he'd be open to playing for the Chiefs or Bucks or 49ers. Any team with a matching red color scheme, something the Watts value since their father is colorblind. Now the Texans have lost Watt, uh, DeAndre Hopkins and Jadavian Clowney and received zero first rounders in exchange. That is a worse exchange rate than the Vietnamese dong. And now you know Vietnam calls their money dongs. How many dongs will it take to sign Watt? If I don't have my hands on a hundred million dongs by the end of the day, no deal. The irony is that the Texans are actually pretty good at drafting in the first round. Watt, Watson, Hopkins, Clowney, all first rounders. Now where JJ ends up probably depends on what kind of pay cut he's willing to take. Based on his logoless white hat, I'm not sure JJ is in a good financial situation. Much like when Tony Romo would only wear this logoless black hat. Look, there's name brand, then there's generic, 
And then they're so cheap, we ain't even slapping a logo on this thing. Which reminds me of my favorite cereal growing up, Little Circles. Here's the thing with Watt. He's past his prime, and has seen the second half of his career mostly defined by his injuries. He started every game in his first five seasons, with two 20.5 sack seasons and three Defensive Player of the Year honors. He, Aaron Donald, and Lawrence Taylor are the only guys to win that honor three times, which makes the award not going to TJ this year really sting for JJ. The last five years, he's only started 48 out of 80 games, but did play all 16 in 2020. Watt has just nine sacks in the last two seasons combined. That said, white people fucking love JJ Watt, and he will bring their eyeballs wherever he goes. I'd be intrigued to see Watt in a Pittsburgh uniform, at defensive end with his brother playing outside linebacker. Just like the McCordy twins in New England, they can always switch jerseys at halftime and nobody would be the wiser. I look at Watt in the same way I look at Von Miller, and not just because they were both drafted the same season. Most fans will look at their sack numbers and think, oh, they're old and overpriced, aging commodities. But veteran guys like Watt and Miller do a lot of things that go unnoticed by the fans. Whether it's simply taking on a double team to free up someone else's path to the quarterback, acting as a key part of the run defense, or in Vaughn's case, running a sustainable and organic chicken farm to better the environment. You get a lot of value with players like Watt and Miller, even if their sack totals are low. My friend Thomas Grassi wants to see J.J. Watt in Green Bay. Uh, that makes sense considering the Packers do need help on the defensive line. And I do think Watt, with one of the Smith brothers rushing off his hip, would be effective. The Packers did try and improve their front before the trade deadline this last season, attempting to acquire Davlin Tomlinson from the Giants. Plus, I think JJ would be a great truck bed drinking partner for Aaron Rodgers. Both guys are pretty used to losing in the playoffs, so I think there's an instant bond there. Also, Tom might just be scared that JJ Watt ends up in Chicago with the Bears. JJ's wife, Kaylea, is a standout on the Chicago Red Stars which is a soccer team for NFL players' wives, I think. Living in the same city where your wife works is a big draw, and throwing Watt on that D-line would make Chicago nasty up front. Watt, Hicks, Goldman, and Max, the most powerful bank in all of the Midwest. Now, Browns fans are already making sexy J.J. Watt art. The Browns should be considered a contender, and Watt makes a lot of sense for them on defense. Cleveland was ninth against the run, in yards allowed per game this last season, but that might just be because they played the Steelers three times, who averaged 89 passing attempts per game. Watt's versatility and demand for attention on the line, I think, opens the door for Miles Garrett to have a 15 plus sack season. The Colts will remain a team uh, people discuss as a landing spot as long as they have all of that damn cap space they refuse to spend. I mentioned the Steelers already. The Buccaneers are now the team all aging vets want to go to to get a ring with. And after seeing that boat party, I don't know who wouldn't want to play for the NFL's version of Animal House. The Bucks do have a bunch of guys they need to re-sign, so it really depends on how that shakes out. Basically, J.J. Watt can go wherever he wants because most teams will welcome him with open arms. Now, I posted a poll in the community tab asking if Watt's release hurts or helps Deshaun Watson's chances of getting out of Houston. Like many of you, I think it actually helps. Cal McNair, though, was asked about Watson today, and Adam Schefter posted this statement from Cal. There's a lot of misinformation out there. I'll leave it at that. Today, we want to focus on J.J. Deshaun is our quarterback, he is a Texan, and we expect him to remain a Texan, and we'll leave it at that. The only misinformation out there, Cal, is that you know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> I'm glad J.J. Watt had decent things to say about you, though, Cal. That way, when the NFL takes you to court for custody of your team, you'll have at least one example of one player painting you in a positive light. Thank the McNair family for giving me uh, drafting me and giving me my first opportunity in the NFL. Now Deshaun Watson's top two choices right now might actually be Denver and San Francisco. 
I love you. Maybe the recruiting job by Kareem Jackson is working. If it is working, the Broncos better not cut Kareem Jackson, which has been mentioned as a possibility for the team to save on cap. But it's not just Kareem. Now Denver is making it to the networks. He's got a list. Uh, I didn't get all the teams, but I was told the Denver Broncos, San Francisco 49ers are two of them. Still don't believe me? How about this James Palmer tweet? Throwing some gaso fucking lean on that Deshaun Watson to Denver fire. Gaso fucking lean is what you put in luxury cars to make them purr. Squares just call it premium. Cool guys, gaso fucking lean. Watson also liked a post about Jerry Judy being one of the best route runners in the league. I've been trying to stay practical about the Broncos' chances at landing Watson. I was of the opinion that they had a snowball's chance in Jack Easterby's hell of getting him. But I'm starting to let myself believe they might pull this off. And hope is a dangerous thing to have in sports. Not as dangerous as having an opinion on social justice issues, but dangerous nonetheless. Now Deshaun Watson has to come to the AFC West for the Monday Night Football billing alone. Ladies and gentlemen, Monday Night Football, we've got the Broncos taking on the Chiefs at Arrowhead Stadium. Primetime brings us Watson and Mahomes as the two QBs try and solve the greatest mystery of all. Who will have the top seed in the AFC West? I'm not sure why any QB, though, would pick Denver over the Niners right now, except that there might be a chance to have an incredibly dominant group of ball catchers to throw to. Other than that, the 49ers are more appealing on almost all other levels, so I really do hope they get antsy and just trade for Kirk Cousins, opening that Broncos door wide open. And finally, the Raiders are somehow the betting favorites to land Russell Wilson in a trade. Well, Wilson staying in Seattle is by far the betting favorite, but after that, Vegas. Why? Everything Russ hates about his current team would be worse than Las Vegas. You mean to tell me he'd trade like the 13th worst pass blocking line for the 15th and inherit a defense that allowed the third most points per game in 2020 instead of the middle of the pack D the Hawks finished with? Russell Wilson wants to go to the Raiders? Another team that has no idea how to evaluate first round draft talent, has an equally popular but annoying head coach, and no DK Metcalf to throw to? Wilson can't be that dumb, right? And I know what Raiders fans are thinking. You're just a hater, you donkey fucker. That's not true. I legitimately believe your team is very below average. Derek Carr played some of his best football last season and you still finished eight and eight. I will say, as a pure football fan, I am rooting for the Raiders to get Russell Wilson only if the Broncos land Deshaun Watson. Watson, Wilson, Mahomes, and Justin Herbert in one division? We'd get so many primetime games. We could become the new NFC East, only this time people don't hate us. Here's my last, final, final crazy thought. Russell Wilson is really into Jesus. His Twitter profile reads, I want to love like Jesus. To me, Russ might be the best fit for Jack Easterby and the Texans' plans to be the first NFL team slash tax-exempt megachurch. Trade Russ for Watson, throw in some draft picks, and that is crazy. I love it. Thanks for watching That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. I need you to subscribe. I am barely hanging on. I tell you, sleep def deprivation, getting sick again, it's like, why? Why? Help. Send help. <laughs>